black box. Let's see what's inside. Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. Now today we are going to talk about Pi 2 AES and it's meant to be used with a Raspberry Pi. Now if you're not familiar with how you approach to using Raspberry Pi as a streamer and what type of operating systems you have to install and how all of that works, I have a video dedicating to making a Raspberry Pi an audio streamer. It's like that beginner's guide and if you're not familiar with it, you should watch that one first. I link it down below the video. But here today I'm going to assume that you already know about Raspberry Pi and its ecosystem and its OSs and what a hat is. So I'm quickly going to open this one. I'll start from there. As you can see, this is a streamer based on a Raspberry Pi. That is this board down here. And on top of it is the actual motherboard of a product called Pi 2 AES. Now, when these two are put together and closed in this nice black box, also there is a clear one, you can choose between these two, they make a fully functional streamer. And today we are going to talk about its features, connectivity, its sound quality, which is the most important one, and like price to performance ratio, few comparisons in the end, of course. So is this a streamer that you should pay attention to? In short, yes, yes it is. But let's start with connectivity part. As you can see, uh, this is quite rich. This lower part of the board is from the actual Raspberry Pi. And this upper section, everything you see from my hand upwards, are the connections of the actual Pi 2 AES. So, as you can see, we have BNC coaxial connection, but also RCA, those are all digital connections, so I'm not going to repeat that every time. We also have optical one, and finally, AES connection, which is not that often found, especially on a budget streamers. So as you can see, connectivity is pretty rich and you can choose between lots of options here. That said, I'm not going to comment on how each of these outputs sound, because that's immensely difficult to do, because each DAC has slightly different inputs. No DAC sounds exactly the same depending on if you're using it with coaxial, optical, USB or AES. Also, if you're using different cables and they have to be different for different type of connections, that also again offsets the results. So I'm going to talk about the device in general and uh, that's basically the most important because all of the qualities or shortcomings that I mentioned compared to some other devices, they still hold, no matter what output you actually use. Differences between outputs are much smaller than differences between different devices. So the thing I forgot to mention is that Pi 2 AES costs 200 US dollars. That's board only. If you want to buy acrylic case, you pay like 15 bucks additionally. Now, if you want to purchase power supply to power it, you pay 30 bucks more. They used a fairly uncommon 24 volts DC. And I'm saying it's unusual because most of DC power supplies are actually 5 or 12 volts, but this, this one is 24. And when you actually connect these 24 volts to this power input here, you immediately at the same time power the hat and the Pi board. That said, you can, if you want to, remove this small jumper here on a board. And by doing that, you separate power supplies for both boards, meaning that you have to power main computing board of a Raspberry Pi with its own 5 volts as if you were using it alone without a hat. And then you power this one separately. If you want to do that, you can. 
I find it more convenient if I can power everything from one power supply, less cables, less clutter. But if now you are thinking like, oh man, I already have a nice power supply, maybe it's a linear power supply or any other type of low noise power supply, and it's 5 volts, and I wanted to use that one. Well, there is a small hack that you can use and actually do that. And it's very simple. You'll just have to get an adapter uh, resembling to this one and hook it up directly to 5 volts pins on the Pi 2 AES hat. This way you can power this whole device with 5 volts and that's good why, because maybe you have a high quality 5 volts power supply like I do, for example, Alo Shanti. And doing this, I'll actually make this whole unit sound better than when it's powered with its own power supply. And this whole hack was actually published on the Golden Audio website. I saw it there, thanks for that guys. And I leave the link down below the video so you can follow it and see what kind of cables and connectors you exactly need to do this, if you want. Oh yeah, small warning. If you decide to use 5 volts power supply, the creator of this board says that then you lose power protection circuitry. That circuitry is meant to work with this higher voltage. So if anything would happen to your power supply, maybe it malfunctions or something like that. If you're using 24 volts, there is a protection circuitry on the board that will prevent the board to die together with the power supply. If you use a hack and the 5 volts, if anything like that happens, both your hat and your Raspberry Pi will be in a danger. There is no protection preventing power supply to kill this hat and Raspberry Pi. So yes, that's a risk, decide for yourself should you try something like that or not. Now if you're asking me about the features and can you use this streaming service or that streaming service, that will fully depend on the OS that you decide to install on a Raspberry Pi. Some of the most popular are Volumio, Mood, I personally use RowPi XL. But again, if you don't know anything about it, you should watch that introduction video, like Raspberry Pi audio streaming for beginners. Because now we are going to move to the most important part, and that's sound quality of this hat. And right out of the bat, the sound quality is great. I started listening to it with its switching 24 volts power supply. That's the most basic most affordable configuration that you can assemble. Altogether, that's 250. And you can choose, do you want to use Raspberry Pi 3B Plus or 4? You get all of these different sides, so you can adjust them to each model, because these Pi versions have slightly different connectors, but in the box you get different sides, so you're covered for each of these Raspberry Pi versions. And like, all that in total would cost around 300 US dollars. Raspberry Pi hat case power supply. And with that starting point, with that starting base, Pi 2 AES already sounds great. First of all, it's so clean and precise. Baseline is tidy and neat and quick and well controlled. There is no bloat whatsoever. And the same goes for the mid bass. It's so neat and tidy and controlled. Mid range is crisp, is clean. And same goes for the highest frequencies. Everything just sounds perfectly neutral. And the most interesting stuff that we are going to talk about is actually uh, sound staging. Now, this hat can produce an exceptionally spacious and deep soundstage. Imaging, placing instruments and tones inside of the soundstage is phenomenal. Everything is pinpointed with a great precision. And I mean in a class-leading precision. 
I just kept listening to it and I realized that no matter what I play, no matter what type of music I listen to, it always sounds tidy, clean, spacious and deep. Tonally, it's on a slightly leaner side of things, but it's not completely lean, it's not thin sounding, it's not analytical, it's just that from that great bass clarity and control and really tidy mid bass, I needed some time to get used to all of that cleanness. And I kid you not, it really took some time to get used to it. Because I was coming from warmer sounding Allo Digi1 and SMSL SD9. And that actually leads me to a few comparisons that I'll immediately try to make. Now, I'll start with Allo Digi1. It's a 100 US dollars board. It has only RCA coaxial and BNC coaxial output. So regarding connectivity, Pi 2 AES is clearly more advanced device. But what about sound quality? Okay, Digi1 sounds warmer and fuller. It has much more mid bass, but it's actually closed up top. It has less high frequency presence. And in general, it sounds muddier. It sounds less resolving. Everything is really pleasant, is musical. It's clean if you're listening just on its own, but when compared directly to Pi 2 AES here, it's not a competition really. This one just sounds cleaner, tidier, more spacious. Soundstage depth is better. It pinpoints instruments and tones and everything much better. And all of that goes with its switching power supply, this cheap power supply. Even if you connect Raspberry Pi and Allo Digi1, to a good linear power supply, such as Allo Shanti. It still cannot match Pi 2 AES, even with a switching power supply. That gap only increases if you move to a linear power supply with this one too. It becomes even cleaner, even more precise, even more subtle details are revealed. There's just no competition here. And next I moved to comparing it to SMSL SD9 which is a 400 US dollars streamer. It's actually a whole nice device with an LCD display and a remote. Admittedly, it looks nicer and classier. And I reviewed that one just recently. If you want, you can watch that review too. But just comparing sound quality of these two, again, Pi 2 AES leads. It sounds crisper, cleaner, more spacious, deeper soundstage. Now, this time the gap is smaller uh, than it was with Digi1 because SML SD9 falls somewhere in between. It's more resolving, quicker, and tidier sounding than Allo Digi1, but not as good as Pi 2 AES. And given that this one is 300 US dollars and SMSL SD9 is 400, like strictly talking about sound fidelity, this one is definitely a better purchase. And again, that all goes with its basic switching power supply. Tuning it with something better, with some sort of good linear power supply only increases that gap. And this becomes a mighty good audio streamer. And finally, my last comparison is uh, by chance, a friend of mine brought, just when I received this little streamer, he brought Blue Sound Node 2i. And he was curious to find out if they're closely matched. And again, the same story. Node 2i, sonically, is just no match for this one. It does sound smooth, it sounds pleasantly full, it does not have any sort of digital nastiness. It's a pretty decent streamer, but it cannot resolve details as Pi 2 AES can. It cannot create that deep, spacious soundstage, and it definitely cannot pinpoint instruments and tones and details like this one can. If I'm not trying to be political about it, I would say this one is definitely like next level compared to Node 2i. That said, I have to admit here that we are comparing 
apples and oranges here because this is like do-it-yourself type of product. It has this cute but small plasticky case while the Node 2i is a fully developed just buy it and use it device and it looks really pretty and it has analog section. It already has a DAC inside. That said, I know a lot of guys that bought Note 2i just because of its digital streaming capabilities. They actually connect it to a better external DAC. In that case, I would definitely recommend this one over it. And finally, I know that I will get these questions in the comments, but I did not have Allo Digi1 Signature, that's the more advanced version of this one, to compare it to Pi 2 AES. Yes, that is like a better match, these two are actual competitors in the market, but I only heard it shortly when a friend of mine brought it to my home like a few months ago. I can only comment from that memory that it seems to me that they have similar detail retrieval. Also, it seemed to me that Allo Digi1 signature is a little bit smoother sounding and a little bit richer sounding in the mid-range section, while Pi 2 AES has slightly more depth and this spatial perception, those spatial cues. At least that's just going by my memory. But you should really take this with a pinch of salt because that's, that's really difficult to compare two devices that you don't have side by side. I'm just going but what I remember how I felt about Digi1 Signature and how I feel about Pi 2 AES. And with that said, I have to say that I'm really amazed by the sound fidelity of this little device. And I was sad to hear that this is actually the last batch that is ever going to be produced. So if you want to try it, better hurry up, because it has been confirmed to me that there is only like a couple dozens of them left and they will not be produced anymore. Instead of those, the company will create Mercury Streamer. And that's like a fully developed device in aluminum case and everything. And I'm sure it's going to be great. I'm looking forward to trying that out but it will probably be a little bit more expensive. But back to this one, if you already have Raspberry Pi, if you maybe have something like Allo Digi1 and you're contemplating about an upgrade, this board is, in my opinion, a great upgrade and you should hurry up while it lasts. So that's all. This is my first encounter with the Pi 2 Design product. That's the name of the company, Pi 2 Design. And I'm so glad that I got a chance to try it out because it really performs better than I would expect at this price point. And because of those qualities, because of its value, and it has great value, it's probably one of the best bang for the back streamers that I've heard so far. It has my full recommendation. And that would be all for today, guys. I hope you liked this video. If you did, then click that button, share it with your friends, consider becoming a patron too, and see you next time. Bye.